Welcome back to day four with Miss Cook. Today for our reading lesson, you will need a pencil or a pen. If you have your student response book, you can use that. Otherwise, you can use a paper, um, a journal. You can also use a district packet if you have one of those. And in this lesson, we will hear and think about part of a narrative fiction story again. Uh, we will determine the important ideas and supporting details in the story. And we will practice giving reasons for our opinions. Welcome to Miss Cook's Reading Corner. You might remember some things about me from yesterday. I have four pets that you might hear or see walking around in the background. Um, I love Harry Potter. I love to reread those books and listen to them on audiobook. I have um, my favorite job in the whole world is teaching at Broadview Thompson, I teach fourth and fifth graders, and I miss it so much. Hi to all you bulldogs out there. Thanks for joining me today. Turn and talk. We will need a turn and talk partner. My turn and talk partner is Hedwig. Hedwig can turn his head and look at me, and we can talk to each other as we stop uh, during our reading today. So find your favorite stuffy. Maybe you can use your pet, a brother or sister. Feel free to speak the language that you're most comfortable speaking at home as you talk and think about uh, what we read and what we discuss today. So we're gonna work on building a summary and we're gonna use ideas from our important ideas chart about Harry Houdini. So some of the things that we've learned and we wrote down on our chart are that Enric Weiss was Harry Houdini's name. He changed his name. Uh, that his family had come from Hungary to America uh, the family didn't have much money, so Harry used to perform tricks for friends and at clubs to earn extra money. And then he decided to make magic his life's work after reading about a French magician that had done that. We write summaries to help communicate what a text is about. So these are some important ideas that would tell a reader what the text is about before they read it. It can also help readers communicate what they are reading. If you have your student response book, turn to page 74, or if you have your district packet, you can find this summary of A River Ran Wild in your district packet. You can also read it on the screen. So the River Ran Wild summary, I'll read it for you. You can follow along. The book A River Ran Wild by Lynn Cherry tells the story of the Nashway River, a river that ran through forests filled with animals a group of native people settled near the river and named it Nashaway, which means river with a pebbled bottom. These people lived in peace until white settlers arrived and began taking more of the land for themselves. The two groups fought and the native people were driven from the land. Over the years, factories were built that polluted the river, killing the animals and turning the water murky and smelly. After years of neglect, two people decided to do something to save the Nashaway River. Their efforts led to the passing of new laws that stopped factories from polluting the river. Slowly, the Nashaway's currents cleared the river. Once again, a river runs wild. So in this summary, what do you notice about the summary? What information is in the summary? Take a moment to think about that. Hedwig and I are gonna think about it too. So one thing that we noticed was that the summary begins with the title and the author. So those are two important things that are right at the beginning of the summary. And then the summary continues with some general statements about what the story is about. It gives some important events. So we are gonna start building our summary from the passage of Harry Houdini, Master of Magic that we've read. Let's think about what is important to include in the summary. I know some of the things uh, we're going to use are listed in our important ideas chart, which you can see on the screen. And I think we know that in the first sentence, we need to include the book title and the author's name. But what else do we need to include in the summary? Take a moment and think about that. Mm 
So I think some of you might have thought that Harry Houdini, Master of Magic, it is about a famous magician and an escape artist. And some of you might have thought that we learned about Harry Houdini's life as a kid. And that's kind of where the story starts. We start with Harry Houdini. We're introduced to him on stage about to escape from a safe. And then the story goes back and starts to tell about Harry's life as a kid. So we'll model our summary in that same order. When we think about creating a sentence or sentences from our ideas chart, we'll first start with creating a sentence that introduces the book and those important things that we need to introduce, just like in A River Runs Wild, uh, we talk about the important ideas of and the author's name and the uh, title of the book. So for Harry Houdini, our first sentence will be the passage from the book, Harry Houdini, Master of Magic by Robert Kraske is about the famous magician and escape artist, Harry Houdini and how he started in magic as a kid, period. So that's our first sentence. It does the jobs we need it to do. It introduces the book that by giving us the name and then also the name of the author and then just a brief description of what the book's about, that he's a magician and then he started doing magic as a kid. Next, we want to introduce the next part of the story when we go back to Houdini's life as a child and introduce information about his life when he was younger, before he becomes the magician that we meet in the beginning on stage. So the next couple bullet points on our important ideas chart remind us that it was important that Enric Weiss was Houdini's real name. And we also learned that uh, his family came to America from Hungary. So those are important points that we want to include in our summary. Think about how you might turn those two bullet points into one sentence. Okay, I hope you had some good ideas. I think that Houdini's real name was Eric Weiss and his family came to America from Hungary when he was a child. It's short, it has the one comma that combines both ideas into one sentence and it gives us the important information. It gives the reader of the summary the important the information they need. So we'll continue adding 
And we have another couple bullet points on our important ideas chart. Let's think about how we can add another sentence from our important ideas that will tell us the next couple things to add to our summary. So the next important idea was that Enric's family was poor and that he also he earned extra money by doing tricks, but he also had a job. So those were important parts of the story that we should include in our summary. We can make those points, I think, into one sentence as well and say the family was poor and Enric and his brother had to earn money to live. We are almost to the end of our list, which means we're almost to the end of our summary. I think we probably just have one or two more sentences. I wonder if we should be more specific about how Enric earned some extra money. We know that he did magic at clubs and for his friends and earned some extra money that way. And that's on our ideas chart. Think about how we might turn that into our next sentence in our summary to give readers an idea of Enric's initial introduction to magic for money. Remember, he didn't decide to make it his job until later in the story, but he did make a little money on the side when he didn't know that you could turn it into a career, right? So how can we transfer that into a sentence or two on our summary? Okay, I hope you had enough time to think about it. I'm going to add my sentence here. Enric performed tricks for his friends, sometimes even earning a few dollars at neighborhood clubs. There we go. That included the ideas that we wanted to include from, from the story. It gives readers reading the summary an idea of how magic started as a hint of a career for Enric. From the passage that we read, we're on our last couple bullet points in our important ideas chart. The passage we read ended in the second chapter when we read about Enric hearing the name of the French magician that he changed his name after. That uh, magician's name was Robert Houdin and he made a living doing magic and that's where our character Enric got the idea for both a career as magic and a um, name change so let's add that to the end of our summary for this passage take a moment to think about how those two bullet points and the last ones on our chart could turn into a sentence to wrap up this summary Think about if we started the sentence after reading about, how would you finish it? I hope you had some good ideas. I have one I'm going to share. After reading about the French magician Robert Houdin, Enric changed his name to Houdini and decided to make magic his life's work. I think that is a great summary. I think that's a great end. It's interesting. His magic, his life's work. What do you think? Take a moment to read that sentence and see if it reflects how the reading that we did ended. Here is our final summary. And just like it would be on the back of a book, there's the cover of our book and you would turn it over and you would see a summary on the back. The passage from the book, Harry Houdini, Master of Magic by Robert Kraske is about the famous magician and escape artist, Harry Houdini, and how he got started in magic as a kid. It begins with a story of how, as an adult, Houdini escaped from a locked safe in front of a live audience. Houdini's real name was Enric Weiss, and his family came from Hungary when he was a child. The family was poor, and Enric and his brother had to earn money to live. Enric performed tricks for his friends, sometimes even earning a few dollars at neighborhood clubs. 
After reading about the magician Robert Houdin, Enric changed his name to Houdini and decided to make magic his life's work. Reading comprehension strategies chart. I had one of these in my classroom and I'm guessing you had one in yours as well. So we've created it here for us all to use. One of our first reading strategies was using text features. So like pictures or captions, those are examples of text features. Questioning, that's where we stop and we ask questions about what we've read. Recognizing story elements. Story elements are the plot, the characters, the setting. Those are examples of story elements. Making inferences, we practiced a lot about making inferences in my class, I bet you did too. Visualizing, that's where we really think about and visualize what's happening in the story and it doesn't just have to be what we see, it can also be what we hear or smell or feel, we can visualize those things. Analyzing how texts are organized. So when we look at the table of contents, it's a great way to see how a text is organized. Determining important ideas and supporting details. That's what we've been doing over the last week for sure. And using those important ideas and supporting details to make summaries. So summarizing is the last thing we're gonna add on our reading comprehensions chart today. And that's what we've been practicing. Over the next couple of weeks, you will practice summarizing with the goal of writing summaries on your own books. And hopefully you'll be able to share those with your teacher or your classmate. Independent daily reading or IDR, just like we do at school, we're gonna do at home. We want you to read for 30 minutes. I know I'm gonna read for 30 minutes. And while you're reading uh, your just right book for 30 minutes, try practicing stopping every 10 minutes and thinking about important ideas or supporting details from this uh, section of the book that you've just read. If you have a district packet, you can write it down in the district packet, or you can use uh, the page in there, but if not, you can use a piece of paper to write on and just think about those important ideas and supporting details like we've been talking about in our reading lessons over the last week. Before you take off and do IDR, I'm going to read a section of Hurricane Girl by Corinne Chandler. And while I'm reading this book, I'm going to be thinking if any important ideas or supporting details come up that I would want to record, just like you'll do when you do IDR today. So chapter one, my ma's voice is rough and low. When she speaks to strangers on the telephone, they call her sir. I guess it must be surprising to some people the way her voice sounds because she's so, so beautiful, just about the prettiest woman you've ever seen, but I think it suits her just fine. I love the way her rough voice vibrates through the air like a beat on a drum. She sings around the house under her breath, since people say her voice is so ugly all the time. Why you wanna fly, Blackbird? That's the song that's stuck in my head now. You ain't ever gonna fly. My dad's blue boat is flipped upside down in the backyard which isn't really a yard, but a grove of dead trees and frogs that won't shut up at night. And the mangrove is just close enough to the water, so when it's time to go, I can get out of here with a quickness that will surely inspire the speed of light. My dad hasn't so much as looked at the boat in exactly one year and three months, which is the time that our lives revolve around one year and three months ago. The boat's ready and I'm ready more ready than ever to get off this dumb rock, but I can't leave yet because I don't know where to go. I'm gonna stop there because I went over an important detail. The idea that their lives revolve around something that happened one year and three months ago. That might be a really important idea or that might be a supporting detail, but it seems important to our character that we're learning about. So I'm gonna record that in my important ideas and supporting details chart. I'll leave that second without even a goodbye. So I turn my back on my father's boat and walk through the dead mangrove brown water smelling like something besides the trees that died, mosquitoes so thick in the air that they might as well be puffs of smoke, dead palms from coconut trees covering the ground like hairy carcasses. I get to the clearing, to the white road covered with dust and gravel and designs of tire marks to my dad's house. That's right. 
there on the edge of the sea waiting patiently for the day a wave will come and wash it away. When I was really little, before I started going to school, when I could barely walk without holding Ma's hand, my mom would leave Water Island whenever she needed to go to St. Thomas for groceries and for church, and she always took me with her. The two of us went on the speedboat owned by Mr. Okana. There was a ferry on the other side of Water Island that could take us to St. Thomas for $10, but Mr. Lokana only charged us five. He was an Indian man that had come all the way from Tobago, though everyone thought he'd come from Trinidad and called him Mr. Trini. I don't know how Mr. Lokana felt about that, but I would have corrected each and every single one of them when I told him so, he laughed. To be a passionate child, Eh, he said to my mom. I asked him, does that mean adults aren't passionate about anything? My mom told me to hush and sit quiet. I was too little to be running my mouth. Do we hear anything in there uh, in that next little part uh, that might be a good supporting detail or important idea? I think there was a little clue that seems like it might be important that she said they used to take the ferry all the time or they used to take the boat to the other place where they could buy groceries. So it seemed like something had changed that. That might be a supporting detail or an important idea, but I think it should go um, in my notes so that I remember it and then maybe more things will come up later that will remind me of that and that I'll wanna use in a summary. So when you're doing IDR today, I want you to practice those same things of reading and stopping and questioning and then using those important ideas and details that you've come across uh, to write them down so you can use them later when you build your summary. Almost ready to go off to IDR. If you are running out of books and you need a new book or more books, here are some tools. You can go on the Seattle Public Schools website and link through the student and family portal and find these websites that will link you to get more books uh, digitally. And I just wanna say thank you so much for joining me for these lessons. I'm Miss Cook. I work at Broadview Thompson. I'm a proud bulldog. I'm wearing my shirt today. This is my last lesson with you guys. You'll have a lesson with a new teacher for fifth grade reading uh, next time you come on. So thanks so much for doing all the hard work. We're all thinking about all of our students in Seattle and missing you so much in the classroom. And I'm glad I could be here with you for a little part of that in your home. Take care, stay safe, bye.